So, um, auction market theory, really, for myself, uh, it is, is mostly about understanding how the markets function and how market participants do business uh, to create the market itself. Uh, the main thing you really got to get your heads around is the trade facilitation process and understand that the, the markets are created and designed to allow market participants to get together do business and negotiate where price should be. So it's all about the negotiation process about where price should be and it's about uh, beliefs and opinions uh, about the current market price and trying to figure out where it's going to go and where it's going to uh, move to next for speculation purposes as well as of course uh, for some traders for hedging etc. Uh, the trade facilitation process itself really fulfills the purpose of any marketplace which is to facilitate trade. Uh, any market that exists out there is, uh, is created, is designed to facilitate trade. We facilitate trade in the marketplace, market participants come and do business and they negotiate the price. Now through the negotiation process the market moves, of course, and that's what we see, the ebb and flow of the marketplace. It's a negotiation of where price should be. So price is basically batted around the playing field. It's, uh, I suppose you could call price the, the ball in a, uh, on the playing field in a football game. That's, that's the way it is. Uh, price itself is the advertising mechanism. The market participants decide where price should be, but it is just the auction's means of advertising opportunity. Now, the trade facilitation process uh, brings in the buyers and the sellers, or demand and supply. So we have demand, we have supply. If I could just bring this up, and uh, let's pick a little, there we are, so you can see this. So demand, which is buyers, of course, supply, which is sellers. Keep in mind, trading is a zero-sum game. There is a buyer for every seller. There is a seller for buyers, a sell seller for every buyer. What actually moves the market is the aggressiveness of the behavior of the buyer, the seller. So th th it doesn't actually move whether there's, uh, you know, based upon more buyers or more sellers. It doesn't exist. There's always an equal amount of buyers and equal amount of sellers. What actually uh, moves the market is the behavior of the market participants. Now, through the trade facilitation process, uh, we negotiate price, and basically the market participants decide or, or, or find what prices are fair for market participants and what prices are unfair for market participants. And that is reflected in uh, price action itself, but also when we look at market profile and volume profiles, we can see which prices are unfair and which prices are established as being fair. This really does build a great framework for perceiving the market and building beliefs about the market and therefore also trading the markets. Um, through the negotiation process we typically find what we would uh, call uh, a range, a range for the market to trade around or a balance phase, a balance phase if you're talking in terms of market profile theory, auction market theory. and. Um, it's basically when the market finds a low, it moves too high, it's, uh, it's cut off by the uh, supply, uh, the demand is cut off, there is no more buying responses at the higher prices, we reach those unfair highs, the market then rotates back down again, it reaches what we would call unfair lows, the sellers are unwilling to short at lower prices, the buyers do business there, bring it back up, etc. Basically this leads to what we call efficiency. Efficiency in the marketplace. Uh, the market's purpose is to facilitate trade, so we typically uh, move back to efficiency all of the time and that's why you find the markets are generally more balanced, moving sideways more often than trending. Um, what causes the market to become imbalanced is when we have an excess amount of demand or an excess amount of supply. That's basically when uh, market participants' perceptions have changed and two-sided trade is no longer taking place and buyers are willing to keep buying at higher prices or sellers are willing to keep shorting or selling at uh, lower prices and if they keep doing that the market then uh, shows to you or proves to you that the perception of the market participants has changed and the market wants to do business elsewhere 
and facilitate trade elsewhere and therefore find a new range somewhere else. Uh, when the excess demand supply occurs, we have what we call imbalance, otherwise known as a trend or a trending phase. It's also called inefficiency. Uh, we refer to that as inefficiency in the marketplace because the purpose of the marketplace is to facilitate trade. It actually facilitates trade most efficiently in a sideways balance phase. So typically what happens is the inefficiency phase doesn't last that long, the trend doesn't last that long, we find balance again or efficiency. So whenever we find a market that is trending, uh, it's basically a market that is looking for balance again or looking for efficiency again. So that's the basics of the auction market theory principles. Now let's move on to the next slide. I'll just take this off. Now, price value perception. Uh, everyone that does business in the marketplace perceives the market to be a certain way and that perception leads to a belief about the market and based upon that belief about the market we do business. There are thousands and thousands of different perceptions, hundreds of thousands of different perceptions of market participants in the marketplace and there is not only one way to trade but the way that I look at the market I see it as a collective conscious. It's, uh, it's the mindset of the marketplace as a whole. It's a collective conscious of all the market participants doing business. Now you can actually read into that mindset of the marketplace by looking at what we call a volume profile or a market profile that I'll move on to next. And you can actually see where the market wants to trade and it doesn't want to trade. But firstly you've got to understand uh, price and value perception. Uh, there, for every trader out there um, everybody is out there to make money. It doesn't matter whether you're trading short term, long term. It doesn't matter. Uh, now for speculators it's about buying low, selling high. It's about selling high, buying low. Uh, so there is only one way to make money if you are long as a speculator that is to buy it at a lower price and sell at a higher price. Doesn't matter how you trade. Doesn't matter what system you trade or what theory you believe in. Uh, there is only one way to make a profit on a long trade, that is to buy uh, at a lower price than where you decide to exit the position and uh, liquidate that position. And the only way to make a profit on a short trade is to short at a higher price and buy it back at a lower price. That's the way that business is done. Now, what that does is uh, in the marketplace it does create a pattern, it creates something that repeats itself time and time again. So we constantly see um, this, this uh, playing out and uh, we can pick it out very easily by looking at some of the examples I'll share with you. So typically the market makes, uh, makes a swing from a high to a low and then back into that high and then back into a low. That's usually what we see in a range bound balanced market. The unfair lows of a range is basically the low of that range. That's advantages for longer time frame buyers. I'm assuming here we are looking at longer time frame ranges, not just tiny micro balance ranges uh, which we constantly find uh, within the marketplace on, a, on an intraday basis. Um, so you know, if this is say for example, let's say a range of about 10 points on the E-mini S&P. So that's about 40 ticks, right? It's 40 ticks on the E-mini S&P, it's 10 points. So on the E-mini S&P, if we are looking at a if we are looking at a range here of 10 points, 40 ticks on the EMEA S&P, um, the longer time frame participants are going to see uh, advantages prices for buying at the lower ends of the range and advantages prices for selling at the upper end of the range. So these are the extremes of the range. Now shorter time frame buyers may actually find opportunity in the middle of the range, uh, like on a little pullback in this area advantages STF buyer, uh, uh, advantages for the STF buyer. Uh, now in the middle of the range we'll find it is fair for both the uh, shorter time frame buyer and the seller. Uh, generally as we come into the upper range um, we would find that it's disadvantages for the longer time frame buyer, more advantages for the longer time frame seller. What you will find is that uh, typically longer time frame sellers and longer time frame buyers don't do business in the same place. Uh, what is advantages for the longer time frame buyer? Um, is not advantages for the longer time frame seller. What is advantages for the uh, longer time frame seller is not advantages for the longer time frame buyer. But it may be advantages 
to you know the advantages longer uh, the price that is advantages to the longer time frame seller may be advantages to the shorter term buyer, um, and that's generally what happens in the pit. We find that the locals are selling to the commercials at the unfair lows, or the commercials are uh, buying from the longer time frame sellers at the unfair highs in a range.